the idea of the certainly the American idea of the of the of the downtown core being a predominantly business orientated environment and people living out in the suburbs is being challenged all around the world and we've seen this resurgence of living in city centers in in large parts of the world in towers um, there are issues that come along with that which I'm pretty sure we're going to get into tonight we had to figure out ways to get our communities working together you've all heard of we work initiatives and things like that essentially we're doing the same thing in uh, buildings and it's all trying to develop experiences for the residents every product is looked at uniquely and we develop a program for that use. Um, living high is a very very exciting thing it's almost like flying it's a uh, it's made possible by technology such as uh, high-speed elevators as well as uh, innovative structural engineering. Living High is all about also um, spectacular views that you see from these amazing heights. Uh, I think what makes uh, urban living exciting is the, is the density and the diversity of occupants and for me these make for a very powerful combination and a convincing case for Living High. Tall buildings have the power to amaze us to delight us, to change a skyline, to be an iconic symbol. The question we struggle with is can we and how can we take the technology that is available today and rapidly evolving and harness it so that we can feel more connected to the urban space. So at the end of the day, we can't make as architects, builders, designers, we can't make people interact. We can only give them the opportunity. Uh, will ver vertical garden cities make tall buildings more habitable? Uh, is this the answer for growing urban population? Uh, is this type of development even sustainable? Some love it and think it's the only way, while others have concerns. They are obviously very green, this type of development, but what kind of social consequences Will these environments have. You must consider a supportive environment that includes both the natural and social element in a big way. It must be positive uh, and a place that inspires us to live a happy and healthy, healthy urban life. Is it just about facilities or is there other things that make building, tall buildings more habitable? It really has nothing to do with facilities. It's creating an environment for people to live the life they want to live. And facilities or amenities are just a means to get us there. The amenities and facilities are a good starting point for allowing the community to form, depending on what kind of building it is, what kind of density you have. But if your building is solely uh, apartments and have no amenities, it's very, very difficult to form a relationship among your neighbors. Uh, you know, elevator rise and the lobbies really don't quite cut it. When you develop a vertical city or a, a development like this, you've got to have space uh, allocated, whether it be in the building or on multiple levels or on the podium or in the park across the street. So I'd like to say it's not about facilities. Thank you for saying it's not, but, but the sense of community I really do think comes from uh, pulling people into that common space. And the units themselves are oriented to take advantage, oriented and designed to take advantage of the specific location and the views of the, uh, uh, the apartments. And so it, maybe we spoke, I spoke too much about the community and the uh, overall building aspect of it, but what makes the building is really the individual units that add up to it. Looking to the future, what's the biggest innovation, perhaps challenge or innovation, which is going to change how people live in tall buildings 20 years from now? I'll just go with what I know today and it's that every one of our projects uh, very interested in, in connection to landscape, connection to green, uh, sunlight, uh, you know, permeable buildings, uh, views, breezes, all of those things. The nature connection is super important and it, it keeps getting escalated. So I think just connectivity to landscape will continue to be important for these types of buildings to survive. <coughs> Chan Lee? I think it's a combination of common space and the landscape space. You know, amenities and uh, all the different uh, new features that new buildings may have will keep evolving and changing with the trend and uh, different uh, 
ideas about how people use collective spaces, but uh, plastic spaces are always available, and it, it, it always seems to be timeless and uh, uh, welcoming in the community. There's so many things that have happened, and I think really what we do is we keep on experimenting with new ideas that we introduce in the buildings, and certain, eventually they become uh, the rigueur that we have to do them. So it's, it's really a tough question. I think the thing that we're going to need 20 years from now may not have been invented yet. Um, I think it's densification. I mean, by that I mean the urbanization, my generation, uh, retiring to cities rather than suburbs. How do we provide more spaces for people moving from the suburbs uh, to the city? And I think all of the amenities that Jim talked about and the green spaces that Jim talked about and the amenities that Chen Li talked about, I think those are gonna become more of the draw for my generation to wanna to continue coming to the city.